we're going to have a look at replacing the PCV valve and hose and also have a look at the oil separator on Ford Duratec HE engines. This is the 2 liter version, the 1.8 is much the same. Uh, as used in a number of cars including the uh, Ford Focus Mark II and the uh, European Mondeo Mark III which is uh, what's pictured here. Now the uh, positive crankcase ventilation system is one of those items that doesn't get enough attention with regard to maintenance. The valves can get clogged up and uh, should be replaced on a semi-regular basis and the uh, rubber vacuum hoses tend to fail and they either collapse leading to the ventilation not working properly or they split open leading to an intake vacuum leak. And the latter is a common problem on these engines, so if you think you have a vacuum leak, this is a likely cause. Now the bad news with regard to um, the Duratec HE is that the PCV components are placed directly between the engine and the intake manifold. And it's uh, more or less impossible to access them uh, without removing the manifold. So that's 90% of the work you'll have to do right there. Um, it's an involved procedure, but it's not too difficult. And because there are other reasons that you'd want to remove the manifold, I have a separate video on that process. So go add that to your playlist. And uh, from now on, I'll proceed assuming that the manifold is off the engine. Now in the process of removing the manifold, you had to disconnect already one end of the PCV hose, uh, probably the valve end as it's the easiest. So you'll have the valve visible and exposed already. You can see it here, it's uh, free to rotate around right now, but there's a clip that holds it into the oil separator. And um, this is the PCV hose still attached to the manifold, just in case you removed it from the other end, just so you'll know which one it is. Uh, I'll come back to that later. So this valve uh, you could remove at this point, but the clip is a bit tricky to work. And since it's such a bastard to get this far on account of uh, removing the manifold, it's a good idea to take the oil separator off and just have a look at it and the crankcase innards. So I just unclipped that coolant hose, by the way, to get it out of the way. Um, and then you need to undo all of the bolts holding the oil separator on. Uh, not at all difficult, except for one or two of them that are behind the hose, and you really want a quarter-inch universal socket, although a small spanner would probably work too. Then with the bolts out, the separator will just come away. And now you can see inside the engine, you can see the cast alloy part of the uh, oil-air separator. Uh, and you can check for sludge, which is uh, what we'd be most concerned about. So build-up of sludge would indicate a serious problem with the engine, and, you know, it would be bad news. But this looks pretty clean, so no problems. Now, here's the um, oil separator assembly. It's got these plastic baffles built into it, intended to remove actual oil from the vapors, um, and just let moist air uh, through and up into the PCV valve. Um, I want to mention here that Ford updated the design of this thing a few times along with revising the intake manifold itself, uh, at least on the Mondeo, and that if you're replacing the manifold for any reason, likely the flaps, uh, which you may know about, see in my other video, um, if you're doing that you should also replace this separator with a new one uh, along with the valve and hose at the same time, as they're really all just uh, one assembly in effect and Ford updated the whole thing on a few occasions. I'm just going to replace the valve in my case, so to do that you need to remove the plastic collar clip that secures it. Um, it has two clips on either side. Uh, I used a knife blade to get under it and just prise it off. Uh, this is why it's easier to do it off the engine as you can see. Uh, so you do both sides and then the collar will just slide off and away and the valve itself will be free to pull out. Um, it might be a bit stiff because there's a uh, plastic grommet that seals it in, but it should come. Now here's my new valve. The uh, bottom is orange for some reason instead of black, but it is the right part. Again, because of the design changes, you need to be careful that you get the correct one as they change things like the hose diameter, uh, which obviously affects the valve size. A quick check of uh, PCV valves is to shake them. Uh, you can hear the new one rattling here nicely. 
while the old one is way quieter. So cleaning up the old one would probably help it, but it's such a cheap item that a new replacement is always best. Now that plastic grommet, the new valves don't come with it. It's, uh, it's actually got its own part numbers, but you can of course just reuse your old one unless it's damaged. So um, push, push it off the old valve like so and get it on the new valve. And don't forget this, um, otherwise you're going to end up with a small vacuum leak. Then the valve and the grommet can go back into the uh, oil separator. And I suggest that you clean the oil separator a bit, by the way, uh, if you're not replacing it. And you just put the valve in till it's home, then the collar clip can go back on, uh, snap it down and into place, and we're done with it. And now you can reuse the gasket on the old separator, by the way, um, again if you're not upgrading it. Uh, but give the mating surface on the engine a bit of a clean up with uh, brake clean before you go putting it back on. Then you can just do up the bolts. I'd go around and do them finger tight first, make sure that everything is properly in place, and then tighten them. And their torque spec is only 10 newton meters. Uh, I'm not using a torque wrench here, just bear in mind that they don't need to be very tight. And finally, replace that coolant hose back into its clip. Now that hose, by the way, is another component that was upgraded uh, by Ford, so if you're doing a complete manifold kit replacement, then you might want to do that at the same time. Now, all that remains is the PCV hose. Again, uh, all I'm actually replacing in this video is the valve and the hose. That's Those are the only two components. So I have a replacement hose to suit the existing manifold. Uh, later versions are a bit thicker. Now you can see here how the old hose is gone. Uh, completely soft and easy to collapse whereas the new one is stiff and quite resilient. I found that the old hose was vulcanized onto the manifold quite badly, um, so I had to hit it with a heat gun for a few seconds, and uh, had to break it free with a blade, and then it eventually pulled off. Then the new hose goes back on in the same orientation, obviously. Um, again, a little heat could help if you have trouble. And then that's it really. The uh, final step is to reconnect the hose to the PCV valve itself, which is now back on the engine. And to do that, of course, you're putting the manifold back in. Um, now that's a bit tricky as you as you do it. There's um, Here's the shot of it. But this is now duplicate content from my manifold video, which covers reinstallation of the manifold, of course. So go check that out. Okay, hope this was helpful. Have fun.